Good morning. It's Tuesday, June 30th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, When the Mighty Fall, and our scriptures, 1 Kings chapter 21. But the Lord said to Elijah, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be at Naboth's vineyard in Jezreel, claiming it for himself. Give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Wasn't it enough that you killed Naboth? Must you rob him too? Because you've done this, the dogs will lick your blood at the very place where they licked the blood of Naboth. So, my enemy, you found me, Ahab exclaimed to Elijah. Yes, Elijah answers, I have come because you have sold yourself to what is evil in the Lord's sight. So now the Lord says, I will bring disaster on you and consume you. I will destroy every one of your male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I am going to destroy your family as I did the family of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, and the family of Basha, son of Ahijah. For you have made me very angry and have led Israel into sin. And regarding Jezebel, the Lord says, Dogs will eat Jezebel's body at the plot of land in Jezreel. The members of Ahab's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. No one else so completely sold himself to what was evil in the Lord's sight as Ahab did under the influence of his wife Jezebel. His worst outrage was worshipping idols just as the Amorites had done, the people whom the Lord had driven out from the land ahead of the Israelites. But when Ahab heard this message, he tore his clothing, dressed in burlap, and fasted. He even slept in burlap and went about in deep mourning. Then another message from the Lord came to Elijah. Do you see how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he's done this, I will not do what I promised during his lifetime. It will happen to his sons. I will destroy his dynasty. Ahab was king of Israel. By definition, that means he was God's servant, charged with the responsibility to make certain God's people were turned to God rather than evil. Ahab failed miserably because he chose to use his position of power to get what he wanted rather than do what God required. Some things never change. By contrast, Elijah, God's faithful servant, was always in some kind of hot water with the powers that be. That describes the life of anyone who will speak for God. As a pastor, I learned early on that there are two parts to that job description— Comfort the afflicted, and afflict the comfortable. Ahab fell in the latter category, and it was Elijah's task to deliver the uncomfortable truth about the king's sin. That part of the job never includes a pleasant afternoon tea time. I learned that 30 years ago. It was homecoming Sunday, and the church was full. The smell of fried chicken and the homemade delights filled the air. But my thoughts on what God had spoken to my heart about the state of a church that was long past its glory days led me to preach a sermon on how serving self leads to destruction. It included recounting how the church dies when it's more in love with what the church has done in its history rather than putting on the work gloves and serving God in the here and now. After the service, I was greeting the crowd at the door, and one older woman approached me with a deeply furrowed brow. She growled at me. She said, those people didn't need to hear all that disturbing stuff. A preacher ought to make a homecoming crowd feel good about how we used to do stuff. With that, she huffed and stormed off. (laughs) Well, shut my mouth. It's an odd thing the way God chooses preachers, particularly in my case. I was like Moses at the burning bush trying to get God to send anyone but me. And this woman was proof that it was going to be a long haul if I lived through the confrontation God's word always precipitates. Let's pray together. Father, we're more apt, especially when we get older and weaker, to wear the medals of what we've done for you rather than hear the marching orders. We want ease rather than the confrontation spiritual warfare requires. Forgive our selfishness. 
and renew us for serving you today. Help us hear Elijah and refuse the temptation to be Ahab. For you today. A positive thought to end today's devotion is Ahab's response to Elijah's message. To his credit, Ahab went into repentance mode, showing godly sorrow over his sin. And God saw it, and God responded. As evil as he'd been, Ahab found out his life's sins were not unforgivable. And that is the very definition of good news. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.